So things were doing pretty good for Spider-Man. You had two great films. The second one was even better. And oh man, the setup for the next one. Oh, you just couldn't wait. And then it it happened. Yeah. So what went wrong? Well, of course, interference and whatnot uh, plays a large role into this. Uh, Venom was shoehorned into the film and just literally dropped into it. <laughs> it it doesn't work. It really doesn't. Um, this, this, I you know I it, and if this would have been that it, 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 it there there was talk of a Spider Man four going forward. I don't know how long they wanted to do this um could they have introduced eddie brock and all that later on i suppose and um the performance you know especially the rivalry between the two vying for the same position within the daily bugle and all that was all uh pretty good but oh uh, man it just um but even that is not the worst part about it it really isn't it's just it's just so blatantly shoehorned and him teaming up with Sandman is just silly. Yeah, just the way it's done. And, uh, yeah. So, okay. So, but the, but the movie starts off. You see that there was something there that, uh, uh, you know, of course, continuing on with Harry. Uh, I, I think uh, the lizard was supposed to be in it. And, of course, he had already set up Kurt Connors. And, um Maybe for a fourth one, they were thinking that his experiments with the the Venom symbiote would have led to uh, his experiments with cellular regeneration. I, you know, who knows? And uh, somehow uh, do that in combination with lizards, and he becomes a lizard. You know, I. Uh, but that the idea that the core of it would have been Harry's revenge plot against Peter uh, as a new Green Goblin. Instead of just being New Goblin, they called him. I don't know, um, but uh, <laughs> so it, it starts off. It's not bad. Uh, a lot of the aspects of it, and uh, Peter is decided he's gonna propose marriage to Mary Jane. Uh, Mary Jane uh, is in a bad spot in that her career is not going so well. She's not uh, doing so great with uh, theater critics and whatnot and uh, but peter is just all gaga oh no you're the best ever you know and, and she's hey, i'm scared i'm gonna you know and everything goes wrong and stuff and but meanwhile uh the thing about peter is that the the narrative here is that he's getting too swell-headed i mean he's having some good times he's suddenly uh, uh being treated like uh a hero and everything uh, he's you know they, there's even a spider-man day they do a parade and everything and uh, he makes out with gwen stacy <laughs> and so that's like it's funny uh, you know because mary jane he kisses uh, gwen stacy upside down and mary jane that's our kiss <laughs> you know <laughs> so you know uh, but it just the, the, the movie's a bit of a, a, a mess here uh, Sandman uh, it gets a good introduction and everything, but it kind of just literally blows away into the wind. <laughs> and uh, the performance is fine; it's good. Um, and you know, it's a sad thing about you know his daughter and all that stuff. Uh, again, I I think Sandman is one of those that went back and forth. Uh, they would actually make him a hero. I guess he, you know, if it had been in DC, he'd be in Suicide Squad and that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, there is something to that that he might not be necessarily be. Uh, you know, he's he's certainly not on the par with Green Goblin or whatever it would be in that evil. Uh, but um, so that's the deal here. He says, I'm not a bad guy. I just have really bad luck. <laughs> and uh, that aspect of it is fine. There's one thing in here that's really bad that they did. And I don't know whose decision that was. If that's Raimi's, then uh, shame on Raimi. I don't know how you could drop the ball on that uh but well i'll just get right to it um see the whole thing about uh peter parker uh, being spider-man anything is of course the death of uncle ben and uh, it's not just the death of uncle ben uh it's that uh, peter parker bears quite a bit of responsibility for it you know the the killer was robbing a place the guy says hey stop him and peter just lets him go says, how's that my problem? 
because uh, he was very arrogant at that point. He had developed his powers, and he was tired of being pushed around and stuff and being told what to do and all that. And uh, the guy had just screwed him off on the money, and uh, so he just, yeah, I'm not helping you. And uh, the killer gets away, or he wasn't a killer yet, I guess. And then he goes off to uh, try to, you know, well, not try, he does. He carjacks Uncle Ben and kills him in the process. And uh, that sets up, uh, for the movie version anyway, it's a burglary in the original story. But nevertheless, that's the case. And this is when it finally, you know, dawns on Peter to uh, use his powers to fight criminals. But it's just a revenge trip he's doing. And then when he realizes it's the same guy, uh, then it really hits him, you know, and that's the whole, with great power comes great responsibility. And, uh, he's, you know, he's broken by this, you know, and he has to build himself back up to be uh, Spider-Man. And, uh, this lifelong obsession with that is what fuels his Spider-Man career at uh, being the superhero. And, uh, that's the terrible burden of, uh, of, of all of this. So now here we are in Spider-Man 3, which has some good elements going for it. Sandman's good. Uh, the Harry Osborn re revenge trip, that's that's good. Uh, so you got the makings of yet another good Spider-Man film there, uh, you know, carrying on the, the story that's been set up. And then you got to go and destroy the Uncle Ben story uh, because Uncle Ben well, uh, was killed accidentally. <laughs> it's just a stupid accident. And I suppose you could uh, say, oh, well, the burglar uh, yelled out to Flint Marco, and uh, that's how the gun accidentally went off. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. So, the, you know, it's like, Peter, I could just, well, I don't really need to keep doing this Spider-Man stuff anymore. <laughs> because it wasn't my fault, you know, I... And, and, and you don't do stuff like that. You don't ever do it like that. Um, you know, because uh, the whole thing that you should have stuck to the core of the story was Harry Osborne's revenge trip. All right. Uh, instead, it's just relegated to be a side story. Uh, oh, for the redemption of Harry Osborne, that he he comes back, and that's badly done too. But I'll get to that later. Uh, but it could have been that he, it's, it, Flint Marco, you know, he's a fugitive. All that stuff's fine. And he stumbles into an Oscorp experiment. And then Harry's like, huh, I can use this guy. You know, and that guy, you, you could make it work out that way. Um, but that the, the main plot is Harry Osborne wanting revenge on Peter Parker. You know, uh, but instead, you thought you had to involve Sandman into this more closely by being the one who ultimately killed ben, Uncle Ben, and it was an accident, and Peter forgives him at the end. I mean, I, and this is all the themes of, uh, uh, you know, redemption and forgiveness. Yeah, they're good themes, but they're not handled well here at all, and you're destroying the very core of the Spider-Man story to get to it. it, it and, it's, of course, you're, you're repeating, you know, Peter Parker's own redemption and forgiveness and all that. Uh, based on arrogance and whatnot, uh, it, it's not good. <laughs> it's, this is not handled well at all, and uh, it derailed the movie. So it's it's yeah, it's really bad on the film that Venom is shoehorned into it uh, because the studio wanted Venom in it, <laughs> who's killed off at the end. I, you know, I mean, I guess suppose you could say that. Some element. I mean, I guess Kurt Connors again. Yeah, the Kurt Connors thing could have led to the lizard, perhaps, and maybe even another or carnage or something. I don't know for someone else. Uh, but uh, it's just, so it's forced in all that sort of stuff, uh, and I, you know, so you can understand that that messes with the movie. But this idea of uh, Sandman accidentally shooting Uncle Ben oh, was was awful. And uh, should not have been in there. I don't know that taking that out would have made the movie okay. Because, I mean, it's silly. Eddie, he's mad at Peter for ruining him because he faked the photographs of uh, Spider-Man committing crimes. Because J. Jonah Jameson wanted him and all that. And then he, uh, you know, he wants revenge on Peter and he stumbles into the Venom suit. <laughs> and then decides, hey, I need to go find this Sandman guy so we can team up. I... 
<laughs> and then Sandman says, hey, you look like Spider-Man in his black suit. It's, I know, I'm a different guy, see? And he takes, reels his face. And, well, how do I know you weren't Spider-Man all along? It, it's terrible. <laughs> Just, hey, let's stick it to Spider-Man. And he's like, yeah, all right. You know, yeah, it doesn't really work. And then he's this giant monster. They're threatening Mary Jane and all that. And at the end, he's like, hey, you know what? That was... That was wrong. Sorry, you know, your friend's dead and everything, because Harry Osborne gets... Oh, yeah. Okay, so Harry Osborne, yeah. <laughs> so uh, why would Harry change his mind? Because they get in the fight again after... Okay, Harry loses his memory at the at first fight, which is... That's where the movie's still pretty good. Uh, they're doing all of that. And, of course, Harry losing his memory, uh, which is like what Norman Osborne would do in the comics and all that, but Harry did it, too. He was messed up with drugs and everything. And... Uh, so it's a it's a good play on, on that stuff in here, but then he gets his memory back, and then he wants the, the fights back on and all that stuff. So okay, but it it, it yeah, it's, it's, you're running out of time because you you filled it full with all these other characters, and then Peter losing his mind and oh god. So uh, Peter's back, he's Spider Man now, and he says, oh, I'm going to need help to take on you know Venom and Sandman. And uh, but now Harry is uh, he's got a two faced face because uh, in his last fight with Peter, Peter threw the goblin grenade at him and it went off in his face. So he's just like, get the hell out of here. I don't want anything to do with you. So he leaves. And then uh, Harry's butler, <laughs> who was briefly in the previous movie, but that doesn't establish it enough. He just explains to Harry that uh you know, Norman couldn't have been killed, that it was a self-inflicted wound. <laughs> ah, come on. It's it's terrible. He does it then. Harry's like, oh, wow. Peter's still my best friend. So he suits up in his goblin outfit and helps Peter fight uh, Venom and Sandman, which ultimately gets him killed in the same manner, pretty much, as his uh, father died. And uh, there you go. So, you you know, oh, no, Harry, don't die. Sorry, Pete, I got to. So he does. And then, of course, uh, Sandman says, yeah, man, I didn't mean to kill your uncle. I'm really sorry about that. And so Peter says, well, you know what? I forgive you. So then Sandman fades away into the wind. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, of course, Eddie Brock dies. He couldn't give up the Venom suit. And, uh, uh, yeah, he blows up. And that's that. Oh, wow. What about, you know, oh, jeez. And so, uh, you know, gee, let's hope Peter and Mary Jane get together at some point. But after this disaster, there would not be a Spider-Man 4. There was talks of doing it, and I think it was supposed to. Because obviously, Raimi was setting up the lizard, and Raimi was more of the original Spider-Man stories type. He did, and Venom was still a relatively new uh, character brought in. Uh, all that, and I'm sure Sony was thinking spinoff and stuff, and they eventually get there, obviously, the, you know, the Venom films um, are successful and all that, but uh, you know, Raimi was thinking more of those characters, and uh, I think Spider-Man 4 definitely would have had his version of the Lizard in it, but, you know, they couldn't come together, and uh, Spider-Man 3 was a big disappointment, Uh which I mean, I, I mean, I, I would certainly say, yeah, the studio interfered and forced him to do this shoehorned-in uh, character, which is going to derail this film. But I don't know. Uh, even if it hadn't been in there, uh, this business of Sandman killing Uncle Ben, I think, just would not have gone over very well because it's just really stupid. Um, so, so I, I guess it was just doomed from the start. I don't know. But um, so. He said, hey, there's cool stuff in it. Yeah, but that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> and it is all the first half starts off pretty much. It's like the other films, you know, and it seems like it's going somewhere. And then suddenly it becomes this, this crap. So, I, you know, what do you do? There's nothing you can do. It's done. So, of course, uh, they decided they would reboot well, with a new Spider-Man and go forward from there, which oddly enough does feature the lizard. And we'll get to that when I review The Amazing Spider-Man with uh, Andrew Garfield in the role. But um, just the Spider-Man 3 is just a sad ending to all of that. You know, it's just, I just, why does this stuff happen? <laughs> but it did. But 
you still got two very good ones and uh easily spider-man 2 is remains the best spider-man film of them all easily uh and uh you can't take that away. You really can't. It's just that it sets up things, and you, gee, you can always wonder what it could have been. But uh, it's still a solid film in its own right. But Spider-Man 3, uh, again, uh, like the other two, does have lessons for superhero movies, but it's the lessons of what you don't do. Um, and that's that's unfortunate. Uh, and, oh, my God, that dancing scene. <sighs> what? Just No. Oh, God, please, no. <laughs> it's, like, it's bad enough already. Uh, and <laughs> no one's going to look at that and say, you know, more I think about it, that's actually... Pre-. No. No. So. But, uh, you know, since then, oh, boy, have they been, there have been bigger disasters than that. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's about all you can do. So. Anyway, there you are, Spider-Man 3. Thanks for watching and listening. Say, while you're still here, why not like and subscribe and share with your many friends, yes. Also, check out my many stores (laughs) in the link description below, yes, where you can get t-shirts, hats, mugs, all those goodies with my artwork on them. Oh, yeah. And head over to IndiePlanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can also catch me at my podcast, Mr. Nelson Joe, on RadioMisfits.com. And you can also watch my videos on BitChute.com and now on Rumble.com. Oh, my goodness. So many places to watch me and my stuff. Oh, yeah. And if that's not enough for you, well, you can follow me on many social media platforms and say hi to your old pal, Mr. Nelson.